Number 18. The initial concentrations or pressures of reactants and products are given for each of the following systems. Then we have to calculate the reaction quotient and determine the direction in which each system will proceed to reach equilibrium. Then we have letter E. Now I see that I have a balanced equation here. I got coefficients, so I'm going to assume it's balanced. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this out bigger so that we can work with it. We got two NOs, those are gases, plus Cl2, those are gases. This comes to equilibrium. I got the double arrow with two NOCLs, and that's also a gas. The next thing I'm going to do is, before I do this plus sign, is now write down what they gave me. Now, I notice that they give me pressure values. ATM is a type of pressure unit, and also they told me that I had a KP value. P stands for pressure as well. So I'm just going to write out what they gave me under each compound here. So let's see. NO, they told me I had 1.00 ATM, so that's what I'm going to say that I have for NO. The CL2, they also told me I had 1.00 ATM. And then the NOCL, they told me I had zero. Okay, so pause it. There's a little trick here, guys. We could automatically answer the second part. Determine the direction in which the system will proceed to reach equilibrium. Now we're at the start. They told us that we have initial concentrations. So the question basically was asking, are we going to go the forward direction or are we going to go from the reverse direction? Are we going to go shift to the right or shift to the left? Well, looky here, guys. I have nothing of NOCL. I have zero ATM. And remember, there is no such thing as negative pressures or negative molarities. So if you see that you have nothing on one side, you got to help that side out. How could I go the reverse direction when I don't have anything to give? I would have to produce this. And I have values for these. I got one ATM. So I could potentially have these two come together to form the NOCL. But I can't possibly have something and make something else. So what way are we going to go? Are we going to go this way? Or are we going to go this way? We're going to go this way because we need to produce the thing that we have nothing now of. So we're going to shift, or if you want to say proceed, doesn't matter, shift to the right. You're going to do the, um, the forward reaction from the reactants to the products. Okay. Now all we got to do is just calculate that reaction quotient, which is the Q. And I wrote down the formula here. We've done tons of problems figuring out how to make specific Q uh, formulas. So let's get to it. So basically, remember, it's products over reactants, and each one of them, it's raised by their coefficients. But only aqueous and gases are allowed in this formula, so I would just always double check that first. But here, since we have all gases, all of these are going to be in the Q formula. So let's do products, and then we'll divide by the reactants. So the products, I'm going to say P of NOCL. And now there is a 2 here, so technically I would have to raise this to the second and then divide by these two reactants. So I have the pressure of NO. There's a 2 coefficient here, so I would have to raise this to the second. And then even though there's a plus sign in the balanced equation, with the Q formula you multiply your your pressures together. So then it would be the pressure of Cl2, close that parenthesis, and there's only one Cl's, right? I didn't see a number, so that means I just have one. You can raise it to the first, but remember anything raised to the first is itself. Now let's just plug in the nums. So the top number would just be zero. So we kind of already know where this is going. <laughs> right? But just to kind of, you know, plug this in, this would be 1.00. 0, 0. 
close this up, you would technically square this. And then the PCL2, this one was also 1.00. Close it up. The QP would technically be 0 over 1. And maybe I'll just do 1.00. But finally, your QP would be 0, right? Anything, if you have 0 on the top, the whole thing's going to be 0. And there you go. So in this case, our QP is 0. And from what we stated before, we're going to shift to the right. Technically, if you do have nothing on the product side, your QP will always be 0. So that's a fact. All right? So hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Let's keep working hard. Good luck on your future tests and quizzes. And I will see you in later lessons. Have an awesome day. Okay, bye-bye.